Another type of diagram that's often used is a SADT diagram. Really, it's a set of diagrams. The SADT diagram set shows two things. They show conceptual structures and how they relate, and also the activities that take place to process the data. SADT stands for Structured Analysis and Design Technique and gives a way to represent the activities and data that are working in your system in a graphical way. The technique provides two types of diagrams that are interrelated. We have our actigrams and our datagrams. Actigrams declare activities by their input and output data and interconnect them through data dependency links. We're going to start with those ones, the actigrams. Actigrams declare activities by their input and output data, and then they interconnect them through data dependency links. For example, here we have a handling constraints activity. This is then de decomposed into three sub-activities. On the west side, we have our input data. On the east, we have our output data. To the north, we have data or events that control the activity. And on the south, we show the system components that process that data. For example, as seen here, return constraints has constraint request as input, as individual constraints as output, then date range and deadline control the data, and participant is the processing component. Overall, this is decomposing the larger activity of handling constraints. We know from the main activity that a meeting request comes in and meeting constraints need to come out. That is what is being described in the three subtasks listed here. Datagrams are very closely related to actigrams. They declare system data by their producing and consuming activities and interconnect those activities through control dependency links. Data in an actigram must appear in a datagram. Similarly, activities in the datagram must appear in the actigram. In a datagram, the west is the producing activity. The east is the consuming activity. North shows the validation activity. And the south is the needed resources. Just like in, like in the actigram, data is refinable into subdata, like we just saw in that last example. Now, uh, let's now look for a, uh, data, uh, a datagram based off of our other actigram. Here we have meeting constraints. Meeting constraints is data from our original actigram. Meeting constraints has merge constraints as the producing activity. We have plan meeting as the consuming activity. Um, check validity is the controlling activity. And we've also got a constraints repository giving support. This is our resource. Tools can analyze the specifications produced in SADT graphical language to check for consistency and completeness. In order to achieve consistency and completeness, the actigram and the datagram must match up. The controlling activity in a datagram must be defined in the actigram. The activities or data must have input and output they must have producers and consumers. Input and output data of activities must appear as input and output data of subactivities for the refinement of consistent activities. For example, in our handling constraints activity that took in a meeting request and pushes out a meeting constraint. The input and the output of the set of three, those three sub-activities needs to be exactly the same. The SADT precursor supports multiple views linked through consistency rules. The language is conceptually richer 
and it can also support rudimentary representations of events, triggers, and responsibility assignments. SADT can also support stepwise refinement, which is essential for complex specifications.